Runcam have released a new camera for the original DJI FPV A units called the Night Eagle. Now this camera works with the original DJI A unit, the Runcam Link A unit as well as the Cadex Vista and is compatible with the original DJI FPV goggles, the FPV goggles version 2 as well as the goggles 2 and Integra if you are to install the O3 firmware on those A units. What's a bit unusual about this camera is that it is an out and out night camera, it is completely black and white at all times, but the idea of it is to give you the best possible night performance. Now what we're going to do in this video is give you a bit of an overview of the camera, Runcam have sent me one with a Runcam Link E unit, then we're going to take it for a look and see how it performs in both daylight conditions as well as night conditions as well, and then at the end I'm going to share with you my thoughts. Now just to be crystal clear before we move forward, Runcam did send me this ear unit and camera for free, however they have not paid me to make this video, they have not seen this video before it's been published, and as always my thoughts are entirely my own. Okay, so what we'll do is take a look at what you get. Now it comes in this box, which is quite different to what we've seen them in before. It's not the typical box that we've seen the Runcam Link or the Vista come in. Now the kit that they've sent me is the Night Eagle camera and the Link ear unit, Vista. I'm not going to go into any more depth on the E unit itself. It is the same unit as we've seen from Cadex FPV in the past. It's the E unit link from Runcam that supports the DJI V1 goggles, the V2 goggles, and it will also work with the goggles 2 and the goggles Integra as well. And we'll be taking a look at that a little bit more later on. Also included in the box is a set of instructions. Let me just try and actually get that out. And then under the instructions you'll find an antenna in the bottom as well as some screws and our typical power cable for the ear unit. Now the real interesting thing in this kit is this Night Eagle camera. It supports 1280 by 720p resolution at 60 frames a second. It is not a 120 frames a second low latency camera so you are going to be stuck in that normal latency setting. It is a night eagle camera so it is a black and white one but the idea of this is to give you the best possible image quality at night that you can get on any FPV system. Now spec wise the camera has a one half point eight inch sensor as I said it's 1280 by 720 at 60 frames a second it has a field of view of 125 degrees by 107 horizontal and 56 vertical it has a rolling shutter and the camera itself weighs just nine grams and it will be compatible with the ear unit link the Vista or even the original DJI ear unit as well but you won't be able to use this camera on an O3 ear unit. Now to test this camera I've actually built it into a Defender 25 from iFlight. Don't really know why I chose this quad specifically, I just thought it would be nice to have it in like a bit of a cine whoop that I can use to test it flying around low level and I didn't really feel the need to put it into a bigger quad because it's not the kind of thing I'm going to be flying at night at high level so this was the test platform for this build. Now to test this camera the first thing I've done is taken it out in the daylight. This believe it or not is normal bright daylight conditions so what we're going to do is just a quick test flight to give you an idea of how it looks in day and then we'll move over to night. Now as I have mentioned this camera is black and white all of the time, there is no colour option on it so you're getting that same grayscale image no matter if you do have light or you don't. Obviously in daylight conditions that's going to mean you're going to lose some detail but you should make up for that in the darkness but we'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. Now just some observations from my day flights, I have noticed that the compression on the DJI FPV system does struggle a bit with the image that this camera is producing. There were times where I was literally very close to the quad yet I was getting breakup in the image, the compression was actually struggling to deal with that grayscale, it was becoming mushy, you were actually getting aliasing effects as a result of the image that this camera is producing. It's simply as a result of the codec is just not designed to be dealing with an image of this type.
Next, it was time to try it at night. Now, this is just me recording with my iPhone, showing you the difference between that and what we're seeing on this Runcam camera. When you switch over, you can see that this camera is very IR sensitive. It picks up IR off any security cameras or any IR transmitters. So if you were wanting to use it with, say, an IR illuminator, you are going to be able to do that. And here, just showing you what the field looks like on my iPhone compared to to the camera as well. Now, just to show you the camera again in some way where there's a bit more street lighting and a bit more light visibility, you can see here it was a horrible night, but I just walked down with it just to show you the difference between my iPhone, which you're seeing here, and then we'll move over to the Night Eagle again. All I'm going to do is just show you a handheld quad difference between the two. Please ignore the banding you're seeing on the screen. Unfortunately, I had it set to 30 frames a second, and obviously the local frequency here is 50 hertz. As I'm under the street light, that's what you're seeing appear on the camera screen. But again, you can just see how this camera looks compared to what I've seen in the iPhone, how it overall looks with the street lighting. It does give a nice image when there is lighting around, but the payoff for that obviously is you're not going to be getting as much detail in the daylight, but we'll talk about that a bit more in a minute. Okay, now to share with you just some quick thoughts on this camera. It is a bit of an odd one because it's totally black and white. It isn't great in the day, but it also isn't amazing at night in the sense of it is basically the same as any out and out night vision CCTV camera that I have ever seen. There is no question that it offers beyond what we've seen on most FPV cameras with regards to night performance, but you will see for yourself in what you've seen in this video is that there is a point where it doesn't matter how good the camera is, if there's no light there, there's just no light there. The bit for me that's a bit confusing on this camera is who this is for. It's not that it's a camera I don't think does a good job because I think it is very good at what it does. It's very IR sensitive, gives a decent image in low light as well as areas of darkness but with light as well. In complete darkness, obviously it is always going to struggle. The bit for me I don't fully understand is who actually needs a camera like this in traditional domestic FPV or someone who is just flying for hobby use. There is no question that there may be applications for a camera like this, but they're not the kind of things that I want to discuss on this channel.
Overall, I think it's an interesting product, and if you're interested in getting one, there will be a link to it in the description. I want to say a thank you for Runcam for sending this one over. I think it's interesting to see Runcam keep making new cameras for the DJI FPV system. That is only a good thing. It's good to see that the link is still available. Obviously, the DJI e unit is long gone now, but we are still seeing Runcam make the link, or at least supply the link, I should say, with their own cameras. What we still don't have today, though, is like an out and out replacement for the original DJI camera or what was the Cadex Nebula Pro. There are some cameras that Runcam have that do offer 120 frames a second, because remember, this one is limited to 60, but we've not had anything that sort of fills that gap that DJI originally filled and then Cadex did with the Nebula Pro. You can still get the Nebula Pro. It is still available out there. It would be great to see Runcam give us an out-and-out -out single Nebula Pro style replacement camera for the original system. And actually, I would love them to make a camera compatible with the O3 system as well, simply because that means we could move away from the reliability of DJI on the O3, or the need, I should say, for having to go to DJI, because there is only one camera option on O3 as it stands today. Anyway, that's it from me on this one. I hope you have found it useful. As I've said, big thank you to Runcam for sending it over. Please do let me know what you think in the description. If you've got any questions, put them in there as well. If you're interested in supporting the channel, please do consider checking out the link to my Patreon in the description. I want to say a massive thank you to all of my patrons for all of the support they've given. I would not be able to keep making content on this channel without their support. And if you'd like to support us to allow us to keep making content in the future, please do consider checking it out. Anyway, that's it from me. Stay safe. I'll speak to you soon.